Welcome to this demo of Spectrum Protect version 8.1.11. I'm going to be demoing how to use the new S3 API to back up different applications data via S3 to the Spectrum Protect server. In this case, I'll be using an AWS client to back up some files to Spectrum Protect. In this demo, we'll go through setting up an object agent on the Spectrum Protect server and starting the services for that object agent. Then I'll register an object client, and I'll do that both from the operation center as well as I'll show you how to do that from the command line. And then from the S3 client application, we'll go ahead and register the Spectrum Protect ID and secret access key we'll create a bucket to use with Spectrum Protect, and then we'll go ahead and actually copy files over from AWS to Spectrum Protect using the S3. I do wanna be clear that this function allows applications to send data to Spectrum Protect via S3 to be protected. This is different from the S3 support we have for writing data out to Spectrum Protect container storage pools that are in the cloud. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. First, we're gonna do a one-time setup of the object agent, which is a piece of proxy code that allows the S3 clients to send data to Spectrum Protect to be managed. So the object agent is the gateway code that translate the S3 protocol into commands that Spectrum Protect understands. To create an object agent, go to servers, select the server, that you're working with. Click on Object Agent on the left-hand side and go ahead and click Add. We'll give the Object Agent a name S3 Agent. We'll keep the default port of 9000 and we'll go ahead and click Add. Now you will want to copy down this additional configuration step because you will need to go out to your Spectrum Protect server and do a one-time run of this command to start the services that are needed to support the object agent so it can receive the S3 protocol commands. From the instant directory on the Spectrum Protect server, you're going to see a directory called S3 agent that was created. So if you change into that directory, and if you issue an ls, you'll see all the security-related info and the configuration files. We'll paste the commands that we copied when we created the storage agent inside of the operation center. And this is gonna set up the object agent services inside of the Spectrum Protect server operating system. Now you do need to be super user in order to run these commands. And now you can see that the object agent is running and ready to accept requests from an S3 client application. And remember there's going to be one agent per Spectrum Protect server. Now we're gonna set up an object client inside of the operation center. And remember, you can have multiple object clients per Spectrum Protect server. So click on clients and then click on add client, choose object client, and then hit next. Choose which Spectrum Protect server you wanna work with, click next. We're gonna give the client the name S3 CLI you can add in optionally a contact name and an email address. Go ahead and click Next. You're then going to choose your domain, and we're going to utilize the S3 standard domain. Go ahead and click Next. And then we'll choose the default at-risk settings. Click Add Client. You need to save off this ID, secret access key, and the certificates because this is going to be the only place you see this secret access key. If you lose it, you will have to regenerate it, and we will show you how to do that. So go ahead and click Copy to Clipboard, and then click Close. You can see our new S3 client listed here. If you were to lose the certificate, if you double click on that and then go into Properties, if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see this Regenerate Credentials button. And if you click that, it will prompt you to the fact that if you do this, it will overwrite the previous keys. So go ahead and say yes. And now once again, you'll need to copy down these new IDs, access keys, and certificates. 
I'm not going to show you how to set up the AWS command line interface to talk to Spectrum Protect via S3. This is just one example of an application that can take advantage of this new Spectrum Protect and S3 portal. One thing to know is in our Knowledge Center documentation, we talk about what API calls and parameters we support. And these include things like object puts, gets, and deletes, as well as multiple part objects and listings. But we don't go beyond this normal I.O. in what we support, so do check out that Knowledge Center document. Now the storage class that's supported is going to be a directory or cloud container on the Spectrum Protect server. We currently do not support tape. Going to tape, or also known as Glacier, is only supported currently with Spectrum Protect Plus using the S3 API. We do, however, support the creation of retention sets to tape for the data that would have been sent to us via the S3 API. So you don't need to install any Spectrum Protect Backup Archive client or Spectrum Protect API code on the S3 application. All that is needed is a command-driven application that can speak S3. I showed you how to create a object client for Spectrum Protect via the Operation Center. I'm also going to show you how to do that via the Spectrum Protect admin command line. So let's switch over to our DSM ADMC command line. Okay, we're going to log on as the Spectrum Protect administrator. And if I issue a query node, you'll see that we currently don't have our S3 CLI out here. So we're going to go ahead and do a register node S3 CLI, that's the name of the client, type equals object client, domain equals XYZ. And this is going to show us, just like in the operations center, the access key ID, the secret access key. So once again, you've got to copy the access key. It only shows up here. It does not even show up in your activity log. So you'd have to regenerate it if you didn't copy it here. So we're going to take this information and we're going to go back to our AWS S3 command line. And we're first going to go into the directory that stores the credentials for this application. And so on AWS, that's the .aws directory. And we're going to go ahead and edit the credentials file. We're going to add in the secret credentials. That's going to be our ID and our access key that we just generated when we created that Spectrum Protect client. And once you're done adding those in, you'll go ahead and save that credential file. Now on AWS, we're going to change to the directory with the files that we want to back up. And the first thing we need to do is make sure we have a bucket. So we're going to list the bucket that this specific node has inside of Spectrum Protect. We issue the AWS S3 LS space dash dash endpoint dash URL equals HTTP colon forward slash forward slash local host colon 9000, which is our port. And nothing comes back. And the reason for that is that in Spectrum Protect, an S3 bucket is represented by a file space. So if we switch over to the Spectrum Protect Administrator command line again and issue query file space S3 CLI space splat, no file spaces show up. So from AWS, we'll run a command line to create a bucket inside of the Spectrum Protect server. So that command is AWS space S3 space MB space s3 colon forward slash forward slash my bucket that's going to be the name of our bucket space dash endpoint equals and then that same endpoint as last time now if you go back to spectrum protect and issue that query file space s3 cl splat command you'll see that we have a file space called my bucket which is going to be type equals bucket 
Next, we're going to use the S3 API to copy a file from AWS over to the Spectrum Protect server. We're going to start with a 100 byte file by issuing the AWS S3 space CP space the name of the file, which is b100.txt space S3 colon forward slash forward slash my bucket space dash dash endpoint equals and then our same endpoint. Back on the administrator command line, if you issue a query occupancy S3 CLI space splat, you can now see the file that we just backed up. And you'll see the number of files listed as one. Now this is a backup. We do not support archives via the S3 API currently. Okay, and back on the AWS, if you issue AWS S3 space LS space S3 colon forward slash forward slash my bucket space dash dash endpoint equals, you'll see that file that we just backed up as well. Now we're going to back up a larger file and show you how the multi-part upload works. So this time we're going to choose the 100 megabyte file and the AWS CLI is going to break it into parts and upload it as a multiple part upload. And Spectre Protect is going to take these multiple parts and treat them as separate files, but those files are dependent upon each other. And multi-part uploads are implemented by AWS for parallelism. From the AWS CLI, we're going to issue AWS space S3 space CP space MB100.txt. This is our 100 megabyte file. Space S3 colon forward slash forward slash my bucket space dash dash endpoint equals. Now, if we go back to the Spectrum Protect server and issue a query occupancy, you'll see that we have 13 files, even though we've only backed up two files. So the first of these is obviously going to be the 100 byte file we backed up. And then the other 12 pieces are from the multi part backup that just occurred on that 100 megabyte file. If you issue a select splat from backups command, you'll see First of all, the 100 byte file that we backed up. And then after that, you'll see the different parts of that 100 megabyte file we just backed up. Um, do notice that the high level name is the actual file name of what we just backed up. That was mb100.txt. Whereas the low level name is going to tell which part of the multi-part file that is. When the AWS S3 client does a restore, it can restore the entire file or it can do a range read. It cannot restore an individual part based on the part ID. Another thing to note is that the S3 client application only has access to the active version of the file. If we were to re back up that 100 byte file that we originally backed up and then did a select command, We'll see inside of Spectrum Protect both of the active and inactive version of that file, but only the active version is accessible currently to the S3 client application. One other thing I want to mention is the object client type that shows up with a query node. So if you do a query node S3 client format equals detailed, you'll see that the object client type equals other. However, if I issue that query node against a object node I set up for Spectrum Protect Plus, I'll see that the object client type equals IBM Spectrum Protect Plus. And this is actually how we differentiate currently if a object client has the ability to write to Glacier or not. Another thing to note is if you do have Spectrum Protect node replication turned on, and are replicating the container storage pools where you're backing up this S3 application data to. If your Spectrum Protect server fails and you need to restore files from the secondary target Spectrum Protect server, you will have to update the S3 client application to point to that new server because it will not automatically fail over. So in summary, Spectrum Protect version 8.1.11 now allows you to utilize its S3 API 
to send all kinds of different S3 application data to the Spectrum Protect server to be managed. Thank you very much.